Saidi, can you please talk about open AI? You can speak to the AI and ask for anything and it gives you this very profound and precise answer. Can you please touch on how the Jinn world is beginning to manifest in our realm and what we can do to safeguard ourselves? Yeah, well, that was the whole talk just now that all of what's being given as a curriculum is because of the time. So for every sickness Allah has a cure. If the sickness is dajjal and dajjal and the world of jinn that the dajjal may appear to be human but the reality of his being behind people and not knowing and people not understanding is a jinn. And the reality of what's supporting behind him a shayateen and jinn. Now do people going to see that? Not right away because people first have to believe. Once they give their belief to him and lose their belief from Allah at that time anything can be revealed, he doesn't care because they sold their soul for a small price. So if that's the sickness and that's on the earth and that system has been put upon the earth, those regimes have been put upon the earth, it's firmly implanted upon the earth, then its remedy is going to be all that we're teaching. And that's exactly what Muslim community doesn't want to hear. And that's why all awliyaullah have put in last days it's not necessarily the Muslims who will be saved. They don't want to hear about esoteric knowledge. They don't want to hear about light and energy and, and all these realities, they just want to talk about Salah and Jummah. But the medicine coming is going to require a different state of medicine. So the medicine that's necessary for this event and these events that are coming, somebody who meditates, somebody who knows how like Surat Al-Kahf. Yes, and that was all these discussions. So if you're turning in new then you're asking something like that. But if you've been following since the beginning of this year, it's all been from Surat Al-Kahf where you have to be from the people of the cave because there's a great deceit coming to change your faith. So you look to yourself and say, am I really a person of the cave and am I training to be a person of the cave? If you're listening to us then non-stop definitely. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you're outside of that cave and not destined for it, you don't know what the heck this shaykh is talking about. I don't know what this is and it's not anything of any interest, I'm not planning on going inside that cave. So they have a different calling and that's the… for every disease there's a cure. And unfortunately not many know the disease of the time, but they, they will begin to know but that can be a little bit late and a little bit difficult when that type of oppression is, is overwhelmingly running on the earth. AI and what we talked about, there are androids coming, robots coming, whatever you want to call these figures coming and they may even start calling things clones. So you pay attention to their movies and, and the way they're trying to introduce systems by mass media. Movies are marketing tools. So when you want to get people to a place, a destination, you have to create a condition so that they'll open that door. Ya musabib al-asbab, ya mufattiha abwaab, well shaitan knows that system. 
is that I want to get them through the door but I have to create a condition for them to go through that door, right? So the condition was a digital currency controlled by a world government. Now how do you get people to that door? By making them think they have a free computer software currency and everyone is going to do this and we're going to be free, we're going to have money free on the digital currencies and, and they allowed all those companies to exist until they bankrupt and collapse them all. And the people will be running disappointed and angered and actually telling the government, why didn't you regulate all of this? Why did you allow us to lose all our money? So we, you, you wanted to play with that. Now Mufatih Abwaab, now enter into this door that we're telling you to go to, right? You'll willingly ask for this government currency in which is on a smart contract. It's coming and going will be documented, it's taxation will be automated, it's uh, purchasing power will be limited based on who you are, your credentials. They can make it work and they can make it not work. They can turn on your system and turn off your system. If you don't know that that's coming right, because the mass of people don't know. But one whom Allah gives to see from a, a greater eye of reality. Those whom are on earth they see only the tree stumps, right? Those whom Allah grant a higher horizon they see the entire forest because they're not at the stump but they're at the top looking at the entire forest. They see the fire that's coming and the difficulty and the conditions, Ya Musabib al-Asbab, Mufatiha Abwaab. Shaitan knows that, so let me create a condition and then I'll force them through this door that they'll ask me to go into that door. So all those currencies that are now going bankrupt and collapsing and people using and losing you know 300 billion dollars, 30 billion dollars, all these big numbers like, the, like those movies, three billion dollars. <laughs> Yeah, so then this is, this is the system and that system is how everything is, is operating on this dunya. And they took it from Allah's way. So for spiritual people they should be understanding that reality that every condition Allah wants us to make a choice. So we should understand the system through a Divine grace and understand how shaitan is pushing people through a door. So it means then we know that these robots are coming and we know that they're going to be planted with artificial intelligence and we know that they have the capability of organic mechanisms more than metal and… Or metal is like the iron age. Their technology and understanding is in the use of organic matter and computing with organic matter and functioning through organic matter is much more productive than like horse and buggy where we are now on a metal machine limited to joints and limited to, to different things. Their system in the jinn world is they use organic matter and the programming of organic matter. And then they'll sell people on the concept of uh, consciousness and conveying consciousness. These are merely the memories that are stored within the brain like RAM but it's not the CPU, it's not the hard drive. They merely can take the RAM, you know, the random access memory chips that a computer has, that's for your screen. That's not the bulk of your data is never stored on your screen, it's stored on your, your, your CPU, your hard drive. Your hard drive is your heart and your soul. Your soul is your zip drive with Allah it's encrypted with light. They can never access the soul's information. They can only access random access memory, means what's in your brain, what you ate, what you did. And they'll transfer this and they'll call it a clone and people, oh my God, am um, 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 unbelievable, they cloned me because they have the ability to make those devices. 
and it'll be from the memories of the brain but never anything with the reality of the soul, the touch, the feel, the essence and the ishq and the, the connection of the soul which is an encrypted light that jinn have no access to for this reality. So these things are all coming. AI and the computer AIs are, are now just showing how, how much they can gather and how quickly they can gather and on an instant they can gather where it can produce. Where we said before web 1 was basically you looked at it, something would come and say, look at this thing on, on the internet, you looked at it. Web 2 is that you interacted with it. Web 3 is that it will produce read and write with it. So the fact that you, you don't have to search on Google, this version coming out now will write your document, write your legal papers, write everything, draw whatever you want, produce the code that you need, perfect the code that you want. And that's their introduction to the jinn world and, and, and <laughs> the enslavement of mankind into a jinn world. The ramifications of, of your inability to use your mind, that when you write something you use the faculty of your mind to think, to contemplate. When you produce a book you sit and contemplate and begin to pour from your heart the knowledges and the realities. When anything you do, you're doing from your actions. What these shaitans want is that, don't do anything anymore and just ask the machine. But then what happens to a society who can't write anymore, they can't think anymore, they can't produce anymore. At some point this will be a unique tool, writing all your legal documents, writing kids' papers in schools, writing essays that can't even be understood if they were plagiarized because each essay is different. It won't give the same essay for everyone who asks it. So they have it now an inability like now children because of video games can't read. Scientifically they know because of those colors on the games it's virtually impossible for children to read black and white. So this is that the depth of that reality that's coming out that they can't read and as a result they won't be able to write, they won't be able to, to have a conscious thought and creative thought because they're lending all of that ability to the machine and that's what the jinn want. Let us think for you, you become a potato so that you're the person in the pod, you remember the matrix? That you're basically just an energy source for them because you have a gift that Allah didn't give them. They want to take the human and son and they want to take their, their gift of energy. They'll do the producing, the writing, the image, the drawing and, and producing codes and making images and everything. Everything imaginable, they'll be doing the surgeries, they'll be doing uh, manual work, everything. Then what do humans do? They lose their ability to function and that's a part of their enslavement and, and the difficulties that are coming. But the one whom meditating, contemplating, connecting is aware of that <clears throat> and understands that you use that technology to your benefit. And as long as you have a, an awareness and a consciousness of Allah they begin to guide on its use and on its precautions and, and how to maneuver through these difficulties. So follow a shaykh, you're not going to get the coordinates of how to do from A to Z, then you wouldn't need a shaykh. So what this is teaching people is ihtiba, is that obey Allah obey the Rasul and follow the ulul am. Don't take your hands off and keep your guidance, keep your connection, keep your practices because life will be like filled with landmines that in every step is going to be something dangerous. Now can you ask on a Thursday night, give us the road plan for the entire life we have on this earth? No, it's not going to happen like that. 
the coordinates for your protection is, is hold firm to the hand of the shaykh as they traverse whatever Allah has created and given them a roadmap to understand what, what conditions are coming and the safety, what sicknesses are coming and what are the remedies. That's what's important, that's what is, gives us an isharat and understanding is that I have to hold tight to the shaykh, it's about to get a lot more dangerous, a lot more confusing, a lot more difficult. And that becomes then our practices, the, the charity, the involvement, all of these are our safeguards and our connection and how Allah keeps the love and the, the barakah and the blessings flowing and the guidance flowing. Is the good deeds with good actions and good character inshaAllah and then the knowledge is they plant the reality upon the soul inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, are jinn also in shape of diseases, especially fatal diseases like cancer, tumors? Further, why generations to generations affected by this chronic disease and die later on with great endless pain? Yeah, we don't want to go back into jinn because you're going to get 10 questions on the jinns now. <clears throat> They're a source of everything. Every type of energy and difficulty in energy and the, you, you have to assume that that's a, a variable in every problem. So anything with a negative energy that comes near you, touches you, then you're going to be affected by negative energy. The lack of someone's positive energy, the lack of their practices, the lack of their protection through ignorance or arrogance, like if someone's arrogant and doesn't want to have a ta'weez, doesn't want to have protections, then you still don't know how frail you are. But when people overcome arrogance and say, no I'm, 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 I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm asking from the oceans of humility, guide me and protect me. Then Allah sends you to the shaykhs and say, use their protections. Then listen to their teaching where I have to build myself, build my family, teach them about water, teach them about how to wash, how to keep myself clean, then teach them how to eat right, drink right, all of these precautions so that to build their energy in a world that is ever more negative and horrifically negative. So yes, definitely every negativity is going to cause a sickness, cause a difficulty and, and cause many different viruses and we describe that in our times during the virus. Every virus and pandemic Prophet described, these are the, the jinn and marada, the very malicious ones. And when they come in large numbers too close to humans, they make them sick because they come with their sicknesses and humans are not meant to carry their viruses and their sicknesses. As a result they will become sickened and, and you know killed by the sickness. So then a lot of these, these mechanisms of injections and things that they were trying to give was to tolerate the jinn kingdom so that they could approach and they could be near certain humans and also to get rid of certain humans. So many, many sort of difficult times are coming and again Allah is the best of those whom, who guide, the best of those whom protect. So alhamdulillah protection from Allah and He's given all these tools for the tariqahs and for our path and our way to understand and how to sort of open those realities. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa uh, Is it important that the people of Tafakkur should witness the unseen or can they achieve without being able to see the unseen but feel the energies? Please forgive me Sayyidi. Yeah, to see is not the goal but to feel the energy. Because the, the seeing, we, we've described that before in the meditation book, this is a, a station of arrogance <clears throat> which, I want to see you my Lord and said, you can't see me. So it means that the, the tafakkur and the whole spiritual path is not by wanting something, wanting a station, wanting an, an ability but to understand that I'm nothing, I'm no one, I'm asking to close my eyes, connect my heart to feel the presence of the shaykh and to see with my heart not with my eyes 
And in my heart my vision of faith will become strong. So when I close my eyes I see my shaykh is right in front of me. You, you, can, you have to be able to visualize that. So when you're sincere and you keep doing, you're doing, you say, okay the shaykh is in front of me and with my faith I know he is. And that's all that's important. Then I'm asking now to bring from that energy and let me to feel that energy, to be in that ocean of energy and to have energy from all directions, breathe in the positive energy and all the practices that we outlined in the meditation book. If you get the meditation book you will read that and understand that. And that's the, the you know the principle of our tafakkur is, is not to ask for something otherwise it becomes goal oriented where I, I want to do to get this, I want to do to get that but that's not the system. The system is to be nothing and want nothing and, and that to understand our nothingness inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa SubhanAllah, after subscribing and enrolling to this heavenly school and playing the mawlid and salawats, trees in my garden that never bore, bore fruit for nearly a decade have started to bear fruit. Alhamdulillah. What is inshaAllah, alhamdulillah, that that light and that love inshaAllah comes, the love of Prophet comes and Allah's rahmah and mercy begins to descend around the servant and everything that uh, touches the servant, inshaAllah. That's their, their barakah and the blessings of the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, You taught us Dajjal will claim he's Hashim and he's God. Please forgive my ignorance but what does Hashim mean? God. That's a, one of their, in their language, the ancient word for God. <clears throat> but he's not going to say that at the beginning. And he's going to come with a very nice look and speak amazing things and make people feel amazing energies. And that's why it's called Dajjal for us, not Antichrist because it's not about Christ. The other people thought that they were waiting for the same Christ, so for them it's Antichrist, not for us. For us it's deceit. Dajjal means deception and deceit. So the deception is that somebody call you to Allah when they have no intention for La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah because that'll be then where people will be lost, oh shaykh he's calling to Allah that's all that matters all some of them, no you, you lost the key. And that's when people will go in droves thinking that this person is calling people to Allah showing miracles. And that's why Prophet warned the nation that's going to show many miracles with the izzah of Allah izzah the Rasul wa izzah al-mu'mineen that he's going to have a permission to show many many miracles. And, and claim to be uh, close to Allah And by the time people believe then he'll be claiming he is a Rasul Allah. And now you cut your connection to Prophet Because there is no, that's why it's always been taught for 1500 years, Khatam al Rasul. Why, why, why Prophet was teaching, these were the safeguards. If in your aqeedah and your understanding is written in stone for you, that Prophet is the last of messengers. Then what? As soon as somebody calls himself a messenger, throw a rock at them. It's finished. It's written in stone for us. It's not something to debate and maybe, how but, what the hell maybe, how but, throw a rock and say, you lost your mind. There is nothing after Prophet And that's the fine line, the red line, that's it. So they're given information that this guy is going to say a lot about Allah so that he can grab people. But then he's going to come and say, no he's actually a Rasulullah. And then you got a big problem because now you cut your connection with Sayyidina Muhammad And that's phase two. Phase three is that, you know I'm so high <laughs> I'm so high now, why stop there? He's going to call himself Allah. So that's, you know, a'udhu billah. 
That's why then the tariqahs teach, keep your love for Sayyidina Muhammad there's nothing after that. And Sayyidina Mahdi is coming as an imam and the deceptive teaching and the you know, disrespectful teaching that he's going to say this, he's going to say that. They have funny even people that don't have any knowledge whatsoever saying, Imam Mahdi is going to be the antichrist. How could he be antichrist when he has nothing to do with Christ? How is not coming to say he's Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam? It doesn't have, we don't have anything to do with that. We already accepted Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. He's coming as an imam and a leader of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that's it. So with the ignorance they talk and, and not having any understanding of these things. So that's an impossible title for someone who doesn't want to claim themselves to be Jesus. So Sayyidina Isa the one that we accept already came. So that's the aqeedah, Sayyidina Mahdi is coming to be an imam and guide for the nation. So finished, Sayyidina Isa comes and returns not as Rasulullah but to come as Ummat al-Muhammad because to ab- uphold that there is no Prophet after Prophet So the second coming Sayyidina Isa has to clarify in the contract that I will not lead the prayer because I'm not going to be a Rasul after Sayyidina Muhammad who's Khatim and Anbiya, he's the seal of prophecy. But how could the Prophet come after the seal of prophecy? So he comes as Ummat al-Muhammad and we've explained even deeper he comes as the son of Sayyidina Muhammad in which he wants to be under his father's flag, his father's nation. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Regarding the talk about opening the spiritual hearing, in the process of cleaning is it common to have more waswas and ears itching, ear problems? Definitely, they're biting your ears. <clears throat> Anytime you want to fight something, its fight will intensify. So physical bully, if you give him in school your lunch money, he bullies you every day and bothers you, harasses you continuously. If one day you say, I'm going to stand up to him and I'm going to finally put an end to this person, he's going to put a fight up because every day he was taking money from you. He's not going to just say, goodbye, ahnam wa sahnam, thank you very much, but he's going to try to beat you to reconfirm, give me your lunch money. So shaitans are the same, they say, well, you want to fight us? What are you talking about? I've been teaching you for so many years, you're my murid, how you can leave me? <laughs> right? That's why the system, well you better put a taweez on because now you got to prepare for battle. You know when other people don't know because they don't battle. So when Prophet described, this is Jihad al-Akbar. So imagine now somebody who's never battled anything and they look like you know they're in the pajamas just walking around. So they don't understand anything. Then somebody who's a spiritual warrior and spiritual battles all day long, look at them, they have taweez, they have their sunnah, they have their rings, they have everything and the one in the pajama and say, why you look like that? Well because we're involved in spiritual battling. And so when, when you see our office and see our center, Look at the amount of taweezes and Qur'ans and salawats and all these things that are written around our center, that's for protection. So your home should look like that. You know, if you go in your home and the walls are bare and you come to the masjid of the shaykh and see well, you know, all these taweezes they have everywhere, Qur'an everywhere, salawats and, and the name of Sayyidina Muhammad everywhere, holy companions and Ahlul Bayt everywhere, why? Because it's a taweez and a protection for us. Angels are upon every letter, immense blessings upon every letter and your house look like it's a, it's a white hospital for what? You have to imitate the shaykhs. So when you imitate a spiritual warrior and spiritual people whom are daily fighting difficulties then you understand. You have to then have your wudu, you have to have your understanding of energy, you have to have your taweezes upon yourself, have the sunnah upon yourself. 
you have the dress of modesty, keep your head to be covered, grow your beard, have your cane. All of these are your, your uniform for this spiritual battle and for this spiritual progress. As a result of that then you're engaged daily. You want to now work on your hearing then make sure that you always have wudu, you always have the wudu of your ears. And of course they're going to try to bite your ears and, and agitate your energy. But you should be making your meditation for that exact reason because the energy in the fight is not strong enough for you. You know people whom are humble they don't want to do it alone because they understand behind that door is very fierce, very fierce enemy. So why would they want to be alone doing this? So the first thing they, they make sure is that they have uh, muraqabah, that they're strong with their connection, strong with the shaykh, strong with the presence of the shaykh. And that gives them a sense of confidence and that's why all the shaykhs when they ask the shaykh that, how do you feel? So I feel very confident I have a lion behind me. Means they have dragons even behind them because of their madad and support that dressing them. As a result they feel that energy, they, they f understand their connection, they're given their support, they've given everything that's been asked of them, they do on a continuous basis. So they know that they have kushtiqa, they have something behind them very strong and in front of them and to the right and left and above and below them. But people have to feel that and put themselves in that position. You feel that you're strong and you have a strong relationship with the shaykh but yet you've never introduced yourself. He didn't even know who you are, doesn't even know your name. Uh, you should be scared that who knows you? You know yourself but the shaykh has to know who you are, has to know your name, has to know your, your support, has to know how you're involved. So all of these were important in our lives so that we made sure we were known by the shaykhs, by our service, by our good deeds, by our good actions. And that's why they opened the system of the email, right? Because they don't expect people to come to the center in their face. It's just too difficult for the amount of students, tens of thousands are watching this video when it goes out. For the next couple hours it goes to two, three thousand. And then at least 10,000 on rebroadcast and, and shares and, and everywhere else. Well those people can't all come to the center but they should be emailing, making comments, going to the charity side, going to this side, doing all these different things so that they're known. And then as a result they have an immense barakah. Look at Hajjah Misbah, 150,000 pounds of food in Chicago by himself. So. We don't draw attention to people because of people's nazar but you know when, when somebody's doing good and, and, and loved and, and doing things right they're noticed and as a result immense barakahs flow upon people. So people and all our people that are doing great and doing their effort, Haj Asim in uh, LA and uh, in Pakistan is amazing crew in Pakistan, all of them and, and that's the, the life they lead. You know that's the, the life they want to be known by the shaykh, they want to support, they want to give, they want to, to acknowledge, they want to communicate that they're doing this, serving this, doing all these things. And as a result they have a lot of nazar upon them from the shaykh. The shaykhs are looking at them, the shaykh's shaykhs are looking upon them. That's what's important. When you feel that confidence then you're meditating and going into an energy world. Or you hide yourself and hiding from the shaykh and why are you hiding from the shaykh? What's wrong with you that you hide from his eyes and from his ears? Then you think that your, your meditation is safe? No. And that you're protected through energies? No. So that's the difficulty. Then people have difficulties and then they communicate and, and they then fall into line. But what's coming upon this earth is then immensely difficult. That's why the continuous teaching and repeating and repeating and repeating that make your connection, sort of make yourself known. Don't sit silently in the back until something you know is, is coming after you but to make yourself known, be of service, be active in your area, be active on our platforms. It's so easy to just type a comment and share and make nice comments and you read something, you took something of knowledge that came to you free. 
You know, this is not a course where you have to pay thousands of dollars just to log on to the video. It came free. You can't just make a comment. Thank you Shaykh, it was wonderful, here's a synopsis of what I understood tonight. The questions and answers are, are probably as important as the talks. People should be writing the questions and answers because it becomes an encyclopedia for them of a question, why Allah wants you to hear this question tonight? You know people who have strong tawheed, we are, got some packages, Hajj Kareem in the back, a whole bunch of masks from Costco. What should we do, give these away? I said, no, Allah sends us this for something we don't know that's coming. And when it comes you'll know why Allah sent that to you because that's faith. Nothing comes to you by, by accident. So every time you're hearing these questions you say, it's not for me or not yet or you probably missed it. Most likely it is directly for you, you've probably experienced this within the last few days or you're going to experience it within the next couple of days. So that's why you write it, you got your answer for it and musabib al-asbab, Allah provided a condition for us all to come tonight and mufatiha abwaab and a door is going to open in which that condition will be understood. So it means it's immense, immense tawheed in which you have to understand everything is, is uh, Allah is guiding us in every step. The ones whom are clever and understood, they understood and they write and they understand, they acknowledge and then they sort of wait for it to unfold or it has unfolded and they got the answer for what they needed. But again this goes back to the question is make the connection, make yourself known. Tariqah is all about the connection with the shaykh, a strong connection with the shaykh and then you begin to deep sea dive is go into an energy world. With that connection with the shaykh then you're going to start fighting many, many things that are of a negative nature. But you need that connection so that you can overcome those difficulties inshaAllah. So a question from a new person, As Alaikum Shaykh. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Is it better to donate some money, say a hundred dollars often or save up and donate a bunch of money once a year? No, donate often because you don't know if your lifespan is a year, five months, two months and every moment of giving prevents something of a difficulty. So imagine three rocks are coming to you within the next month, when would you give? Oh, I'll wait, maybe those rocks then hit you by the time you were waiting. So it means that Prophet describes sadaqah, zakah, donating, whatever you want to call it, takes away hardship. So there's change that you can give on a daily basis, means you read the du'a, you read the awrad on the app. There's a little button, you put just a dollar, two dollars, three dollars because you read the du'a, you want to seal your amal and your actions by that action. And then you say, every day I'm going to give this and every month I'm going to give whatever I'm going to give. That giving takes away and lessens. So that rock that was coming at you, by the time you gave Allah made it like a dust and like sand was thrown at you instead of a boulder. So we've seen in our lives and that's the system and this is the system that Prophet gave to us that the, the giving diminishes the hardships and hardships have already been written. So Allah says, we're going to throw something at that servant. Now either it's going to be a rock that's going to alter their life or by their, their giving and generosity Allah made it like sand in which it's the same rock. Right? But the size is, is so insignificant, it's not life altering. And people have given and got into a car accident and the car is completely destroyed but nothing is upon them. So it means this is, this is the life of Islam and the way of Islam is that we give to be generous, to take away hardships. Once those have been settled and hardships and difficulties settled. It's an immense source of barakah and blessings for more sustenance to come. So the one whom gives in their faith knows nothing is diminished and that everything is multiplied. So Allah shows us in nature that one grain of corn is planted, seven 
stocks will come up. Means seven entire stocks will come up, upon each stock is a hundred pieces of corn. And on each piece of corn how many hundreds of new seeds are brought? So it means with one grain Allah can multiply seven to a th- 700 to a thousand times and He does this every moment at every second of every moment vegetation is being grown, plants and pomegranates are being grown from one seed. A whole tree comes that produces thousands of fruits and inside each fruit hundreds and or thousand little seeds or four hundred little seeds from one grain, from one seed. So anyone who doubts that their one giving cannot be multiplied then is a lack of faith. So one is a protection and it's the immense source of bounty in which Allah grants a bounty, grants an opening, grants a blessings and we described in the month of Rajab Surah Munafiqeen in which the only thing a servant asks Allah after dying, Ya Rabbi let me go back to give everything I have so that I can become from Salihin to your righteous and pious servants. Not that let me go back and finish all my prayers, let me go back and do all my fasting. And Allah gives the example in Qur'an that they ask to go back to give everything to become from Allah's righteous servants because the act of giving was so important and so intense upon the soul of a cleansing because it clears the account of everything that was uh, done wrong in the contract, knowing and unknowing that sadaqah and zakat cleans that and the immense bounty that it produces for the soul. So alhamdulillah, so the system that is put together for people to be protected inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for your blessings and immense teachings. Last week you explained Ayn and Ba of Abd. Can you please explain realities of Dal in Abd? Shukran Sayyidi. InshaAllah <coughs> the, the Abd <coughs> and the Dal is, is this dunya and the Dalil the guidance and guide of this dunya that the immensity is based on this, this dunya because the, the doorway is the dal. <clears throat> so when we see the dal it's the dalil and the dalil of khayrat, the best of those whom guide is Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why it's in the Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyya wazifa. Belief is that Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyya is the soul of all tariqahs, the source and energy of all other tariqahs. So it means that Dalai al-Khirat and its recitation which are the immense praisings based on the seven juz, seven sections, one for every day immense praisings upon the reality of Prophet where was brought to this earth and given to Imam Jayzuli, which Imam Jayzuli is, is not the author of these praisings but was merely the benefactor of what Allah granted as ancient praisings to come through him and be revealed upon this earth. Because this praising is from Bahr al-Qudra, an ancient oceans of power in which the Muhammadan light is moving with an immense speed, what we call an ocean of power. The sound of that ocean of power is Dalal Khirat. So the best of guides then is giving to us that reality. So when we come to the love of Prophet and the only door to that reality of Abd is through Dalai Khirat and the reality that Dalai Khirat means the best of guides is Sayyidina Muhammad by loving him, by praising upon him, by reading all of these ancient praises we're imitating this ocean of power. When we imitate that ocean of power then 
Prophet begin to open that dal so that we can enter now to the ba' which is all of Qur'an is located in 30 juz, 30 juz in 7 verses. All of Fatiha, Surat Al-Fatiha 7 verses is loaded into Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So every time we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem you're reciting all of Qur'an. All of the reality of Surah Fatiha, all of that located in the ba. So only Dalal Khirat, Sayyidina Dalal Khirat, one of the names of Prophet can open that ba in which he grants whom his ulul bab. So it has to be from the ulul bab who grant you to enter into that ba. That's why Imam Ali has the Zulfiqar of the Ulul Bab because they have to give you from that reality and take off the faculty of your head so that you think by your heart not by your, your head contemplating is this right, wrong, is what's this, what's that but by coming through and coming to the Divine with the heart. If they can traverse that ocean and Imam Ali opens for them the ba and the oceans of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Inna huwa Sulaiman wa inna huwa, inna huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Means again these are the realities of Prophet At that time Allah to dress the servant with an ancient ayn but these servants their ayn of the heart has to be open and it never opens for somebody who never practiced to open their ayn. To open ayn, A-Y-N in English, ayn stands for eyes, your eye. Means if you never try to open your spiritual eye, how Allah can dress you with the spiritual realities of knowledge? That goes back to the tafakkur. So means they came, these are the people of tafakkur, these are the people of immense and intense muraqabah, tafakkur in which one hour like 70 years they spend thousands of hours like they've lived hundreds and thousands of lifetimes. As a result they enter to that dal, into the heart of that dal, that dal takes them into the oceans of the ba and the oceans of power, oceans of Qur'an. And Allah dresses their spiritual ayn and dresses them from an alim. And they're the, the people of ancient knowledges. InshaAllah. <clears throat> As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Please forgive me for my ignorance. Walaykum as in the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammad where do the higher ranks of soul exist within? Deeper to the center. Instead of thinking of it as height, we'll make it one dimensional <clears throat> to understand. So you make a circle and you say that this Muhammad and Rasulullah is this reality of this circle that the circumference and then there's a radius to the center. Our life is to verse the radius into the center. So it's not about height and dimension and things makes us confused, make it a one-dimensional image. And our life is our journey to the center, the journey to the Lord of power, Rabbul Izza. Inside the very oil of its reality is the power of Allah because Allah is the power of creation but Allah is not there. Every step towards that is to reach closer to Rabbul Izza, this Lord of power. So the tariqah is what? The circle is sharia, so you make a circle, but align this sharia. 
Everything is bound by God's law. They want it, they don't want it, right? Everybody has to make hajj. They say, no Shaykh I don't have to make hajj. Yes you do, Allah is spinning the earth so Allah has you already making hajj. Everybody is bound by sharia, it's the law of, of creation. Then your circumference to the center is the Rasul. So the messengers they're, they're all pointing to the center. That radius is tariqah. Every step on, on the way, once you step off of the circumference, that's your way of marifah. <clears throat> So it means every step on that radius now you put a little line and say every step, once you step off of the circumference Allah is asking you to ascend, make an ascension. So as soon as you step that's marifa and every subsequent, subs, subs, subsequent step is marifa. So you say, what is the knowledge of marifa? It's every step towards the center. And the closer you're coming is ilmu haqiqah. The closer you're coming to that center, this is the knowledge of truth because the truth is closer to the center than the circumference. So as I'm going on my marifah, I'm approaching now haqiqah, these knowledges of truth. When people say, how you know there's a truth because it's closest to the center and the shaykhs that traverse into that reality, they died into that reality, they were taught in that reality and sent back to the circumference as a guide. They come on step with me, let's go. They've already been there to the center, they're not coming and experimenting with you. They became Gandalf the white, they come back to the outside and say, come with me and they bring people in. So every step is a haqiqah, is a marifa towards this way of knowing. The haqiqah is the knowledges of truth until they can reach into the center of Rabbul Izza, this Lord of Power. So the one who enters into the center, what do you see when somebody who's in the center? They hold all of the radiuses. But the one who's only on the radius until he can reach only has knowledge of his path. Once you're in the center what happens? You know all the radiuses because you're in the center. And from Rabbul Izza all these knowledges are flowing out. So then those whom traverse into that center with their soul, with their being, with their entire wujud then the center is teaching them. As they drew into that reality they entered back into their reality of the center. In their seclusions they entered into that center, they were given those keys of that reality and then their center opened up to every reality and sent back out to the circumference to guide people. InshaAllah. If you're confused don't worry, just take notes and keep meditating. InshaAllah each thing Allah inshaAllah open for every student the ability to understand and based on where they are and if you don't take notes you're gonna pick up like you know doorbell ring like a telephone ring where a hundred kids sit and say a message in the ears and by the time you got to the end it was something different. So without the notes people like, do you talk about like this and like, like this and was like this? So it'd be so scattered because the, the depth of these understandings are very different. But when we take the notes and we have this information on this, the information on this and then later Allah will expand the heart and soul for people to understand what's necessary for them to understand inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum ya Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. What can we do when we have Wahhabi friends always trying to target us with their attack although we don't want to lose the good old friendship? 
<laughs> yeah, either you learn not to talk about your faith and, and begin to stand up for what you believe and say, I don't want to talk about it because we have a difference and it's going to break my relationship with you and let's just stick to talking about soccer. So that, that becomes the depth of a shallow relationship. And a lot of difficulties for people is they, they don't have people to talk with about their spiritual path and they want to share it with people of like mind and, and like understandings. So that becomes difficulty in the last days to find somebody who has a has a sincere heart and wants to take a path of inner realities. And many people emailing, can I go here, can I go to this center, can I go to that center? And you can go wherever you want but in our 30 years of experience the… what you're trying to avoid is this desire to share what you know and hope that others will just listen and also share what they know and you'll be able to walk away having a nice conversation. And unfortunately most people will negate what you know, say, no, no, that's not true, no, that's not true, that's not true. And also you should be reciting this, doing this, doing this and before you know you are cross-contaminated. So even in our own center continuously having to give talks and disciplines that don't share your wazifa, don't share your awrad. Don't share your experiences with other people, don't you know think that uh, somebody listened to you then they have to do this recitation and that recitation. And that's the difficulty in, in today's society is anywhere you go. If you go to a masjid forget it, they're gonna fully tell you, no this is all this, this is forbidden, this is forbidden, don't do this. So if you're a person that has to share what you do and how you do it, you're going to run into a lot of conflict. So best you just sit on the couch, watch the live. Make your comments on the comment section of the video, try to be interactive if you want to sort of communicate with <coughs> any questions. Otherwise you develop a discipline in which not to share. You just go as a participant in a center somewhere and just do the zikr, just do an association, don't have to mention what you do, don't have to try to get guidance for what you do. And anyone asks you say, I have a shaykh, thank you very much and, and you go home. But the overwhelming events is it doesn't work that way. Shaykh, I went and now they told me to recite this, I have to recite that, that what we're doing is wrong, they say this is right and uh, you entered into like the circus. So welcome to the jungle, you're in, in a circus now and people are going to sort of convince you everything you're doing is wrong. If they hear any of your experiences they become jealous and immediately begin to say, oh I don't know what's that, well, what's this. And we get it all the time from emails. So as soon as they got a taweez, ten other taweezes were given to them. Oh, why do you have a taweez from them? Let me give you a taweez from my mom. Here's a taweez from my uncle, here's a taweez from this. So that's… you're gonna run into sort of a patchwork of, of all these different types of people. And everyone wants to give you a wazifa of what to recite and how to do it. But you have to have an inner discipline that I have a shaykh, I have a doctor, I go into the waiting room, I don't really talk too much so it doesn't resolve my, my desire to talk and to be talked to because that's exactly the problem is as soon as you want to, somebody to talk to you they're gonna tell you what to do. And whatever you're doing is wrong and now follow me and even if the person is nothing or no, didn't know anything or just came one day still they're gonna tell you something. We've had people come one day and they tell people what to do. So that wasn't… That, was, <laughs> that wasn't a restriction that they're new because in their mind they're not new, they know everything. And that's the problem is that people have so many sicknesses and so much egoism and they cross-contaminate each other. So if people can keep quiet, they want to go somewhere for the enjoyment, they go somewhere and stay quiet and, and try to keep their sanctity and keep their practices safe, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Taala. With this way which has so much subtle cues and inference, how do we know when we are being dispatched to another community with what we have received from this caravan, inshaAllah? How… You, if you're being dispatched to another community? <laughs> well that being dispatched to another community is on your own partaking. 
So we, we served our shaykh with our lifetime to reach towards a, a reality because a shaykh has to know you, right? A shaykh has to know you, trust in you and begin to convey to you. And it doesn't happen by your side, it doesn't happen that you, you just do things and you start to unlock doors. So it's based on accompanying. So when I accompany the shaykh, they, they sanctify and certify every step of the way in the spiritual association. And as these sort of certifications are coming, these are the keys that unlock. So the shaykh knows the student, certifies the student. So give you example, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jailani was walking with his top top student and Mawlana Shah Naqshband appeared to him. At that moment they were walking on the edge of a cliff, he's walking with his student and Mawlana Shah Naqshband appeared in his ruhaniyat because they're in different times. And immediately when he saw Mawlana Shah Naqshband he pushed the student and the student went over the edge of the cliff. <coughs> <laughs> he's screaming as he's falling, going over. And then the as a might of that time he was allowed to show miraculous miracles. He spiritually grabbed him and brought him right back to the top and said that, as you were falling I was reviewing your heart and from what I'm giving to you, you had no complaints. You didn't complain my shaykh just threw me off the cliff, <laughs> you were just the fear of you know the falling. So alhamdulillah I'm very satisfied. Mawlana Shah Naqshband appeared and said, that's according to you but according to Naqshbandiya I found a complaint deep in his lataif in which he was concerned that the shaykh had forsaken me and why am I being forsaken in this fall? So according to Naqshbadiyya we wouldn't give him his trust. And that is an example of, of an immense reality amongst these awliya. Now this was a time in which this miraculous path was miraculous. But because of the proximity to dajjal and the use of miracles for dajjal only because then you would be misinterpreted as a dajjal doing miraculous events. But how they review is important to take away from that. That the level of adherence and loyalty, the level that you stick to your shaykh until you know life changes a condition, you don't change anything. You can you continue to come, continue to follow, continue in your heart. If you complain by mouth you're already in trouble. They're checking not from mouth even. They want to see that in the depth of your inner heart, do you have a shock and a doubt of who he is? Do you have a doubt of, of, of what's been given as a remedy to you or a, a, of a, what you're supposed to do or is he communicating, am I connected, am I not connected? So they listen to the whispers of the inner soul and inner heart, not only the physicality. So the depth is so deep. You have to get over the physical, if you're already doubting at physical and your mind is going here and you want to sit there, sit with them, you'll never reach to these realities. And if you don't reach to these realities, no ahad, no covenant can be given to the servant. And if you're not coming for the covenant, you're just coming for the barakah of the food or, or the association, no, 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 come for the barakah, go wherever you want. But if you're if you coming and saying, say, oh after all these years I never achieved anything because it's, it's not that easy. You accompany, you're loyal, you keep your practices, you go deep into your meditation, go deep into your contemplation, everything is the hand of Allah on everything. And when things happen not to complain, I'm a shaykh forsake me, how come he didn't prevent this, how come he gave this, how come he didn't give this. Knowing that Allah is the one whom gives and provides. So there's a deep reliance on Allah that everything is coming from Allah with the barakah of Sayyidina Muhammad and the intercession and prayers of our shaykh and that he's praying for us, guiding us and leading us to that way. And then the heart learns how not to complain, not to complain, not to complain. So that the shaykhs whom are watching the inner qalb and the inner reality 
they're passing the student. So imagine that with the criteria of saying, well I'm going to leave to another group. So that, that's something different, that's not tariqah, that's like modern day sort of you know playing the field in life and tariqah is not like that. Tariqah is like we said, people don't come to take bayat, they come to give their bayat. They say, I'm with you till I go into the grave and that's what's important is that we want to be buried in that way and we have the nasheed and the salawat that I want to die on my path in which I died on a path based on my loyalty, my adherence to the way and I achieve what I achieve by my loyalty and my, my perseverance. Not that I bounce around and at the end I say, I don't know what shaykh is going to vouchsafe for me or what shaykh is going to even know me or… So this is different, that's the whole thing. Allah is giving us a chance to make our relationship with Prophet very real. So in our life we said, okay the shaykh is a representation of Sayyidina Muhammad Once I make that connection, make that reality, that's it, there's nowhere to go. I'm not leaving the hand of Prophet for anything because even the hand of Prophet will ask that, why are you going somewhere else when you have been given the signs from us, heard the knowledges from us, understood all the realities from us, where you're going to? Another hand of Prophet is going to say that you're disloyal to that one, why would you be loyal with this one? So it has a very deep, deep reality. That's why it, it, it's, it's based on uh, good character, the tariqah is based on, on good character, good manners and uh, lots of spiritual practices so that people can persevere and adhere to the, the, the principles and the practices of tariqah inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Najjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.